I guess it'll let me. I guess it'll let me record. I forgot to. I forgot to take last week's off, and week before us. So oh, I've funny. I've used all my space and more. Mm. Yeah, it came on here. It, it announced that. Uh, yeah, it it, it announced it to TR too. So mm, I think we got it. Uh yeah. The, the see the we'll gospel stand with that, brother Robert. Uh, that's a the subject. gospel stand. The Baptists believe that the that the second person of the Trinity. Uh -huh. was eternally begotten yeah so mm -hmm. you have god coming from god yeah and then the holy spirit pre proceeds from both of them yeah mm -hmm. that, that's just a traditional catholic view isn't it yes that's the roman catholic view the mm -hmm. the greek orthodox view is that the holy spirit uh, proceeds only from the father uh -huh. And that's what that's one of the things the Greek Orthodox and the Roman Catholics split over. Oh goodness. <laughs> but Wells and the major and the other strict Baptists agreeing with the primitive Baptist in America, I believe he did anyway, mm -hmm. states that the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit are all three eternal, unbegotten, and underived. Amen. Right, amen. Yes. That this one God is one God from all eternity, amen. and that the three are one, amen. and amen. that they all possess the whole of the Godhead. However, Jesus possessed the whole of the Godhead bodily. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. And that's where the difference lies. Is that amen. that uh, we believe, or I believe, I, I think. Most of y'all at least believe it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That uh, the word became flesh, and that's when he became begotten. He was Mark, begotten yeah. of the Father. Right. Of course, you can read in, in the scriptures and it'll tell you this that uh, uh Paul mm -hmm. will tell you mm -hmm. the um but he quotes the old testament text, Thou art my son this day as I begotten, have I begotten thee. In reference to Jesus' resurrection from the dead, mm -hmm. rather than uh, his birth at Bethlehem. Right, right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. well, we know he's first begotten from the dead. Scripture says that plainly. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. the The Father, the Word. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit, or what John said, if you believe First John five seven, uh, it says those three are one. It doesn't say the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says the Father, the Word. If you ever read Phil Potts' book on the eternal Sonship of Christ, mm -hmm. if it makes sense to you, please explain it to me. <laughs> Because of all of his writings. To inquire a little further into that, my position that I hold, and I'll just say based on, I'll just say for short sake, Proverbs 8, mm -hmm. I was brought forth before the dust of the earth. Right. Not, that is not a begotten. Oh, you talk about that. Uh, you're you're talking about um, all right. Should that be called a begotten? I, I that's what I think about when I say that. I believe that's when he was constituted as mediator. Yeah, and the elect was given to him. Um. Well, I'm not sure we could call it begotten. Okay, uh, I, I understand what you're saying, and I understand where you're coming from on it. Right. I'm just not sure that that's the right word. I'm not sure it's the wrong word either. Right. Now, but <laughs> well, I'm certain. I'm all I'm certain of is she said there's brought forth. That's right, there. and that's all I can. That's as far as I can go. I was just wondering how you looked at it. Uh, yeah, as far as I look at it, I I look at that as his constitution, as mediator when the elect were united with him. And um, 
Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs. Proverbs is before Isaiah, isn't it? Yes. That's that number, I think. <laughs> I'm interested to see what that brought forth is in the Septuagint. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. The Lord created me, head of his ways, for his works. Before the eons, before the age, he founded me in the beginning, before making the earth. He founded. Man, I ain't never seen that word before. 2311, I think that says. What verse were you reading there, brother? 22 and 23. 22 and 23, okay. 23 was the one you had reference to, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, 23, 23 says, I was set up from everlasting, oh. from the beginning, or the earth was. Right. It says in verse 25, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was brought forth, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. Oh, okay. I hadn't gone far enough. Yeah, when he prepared before the heavens, making when he prepared the abysses, the, yeah. before the coming forth of the springs of water, mm -hmm. before the seeding of the mountains, and before all the hills, you're right. He engenders me. Really? Yes. Well, I've, I've often looked at the begotten son of God in all of those aspects that you had reference to. Uh, I think some of them are declarative. Yes, I think so too. Not that it, that's when he was begotten, but that it declared. It's, it's kind of like the resurrection didn't make him the son of God, but it declared him to be so. And power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, that, that eighth chapter of Proverbs for years has, uh, has puzzled me. I've, I've read it and read it and read it and read it. And don't sure I understand hardly anything about it yet. But uh, there's some things there that in my mind suggest that the mediatorial Christ mm -hmm. been on it was brought forth before there was ever a man, ever an earth, ever a hill. Uh, and I suggest to folks that there is an eternal covenant. There had to be an eternal mediator that covenant. Well, yeah. Absolutely. So when I look when I look at that, I I think I've thought of it, maybe that's not the right words to use, but I've thought of it as begetting. Uh, well, I think it is the right word based on the Septuagint. Yeah. Because so, it is uh, Geneo. Yeah. It's kind it's of like Gineo. we had a discussion one time recently, Brother Lackey, about uh, uh, the Godhead dwelling in him bodily. And I'm right to ask the question. Uh, was there a time when the Godhead did not dwell in the Christ, in the mediator? And I, my position is that, it, no, that Godhead has always been in the mediator. Mm -hmm. But the difference was when he came and was born of the virgin, he was in the flesh. That's right. And so, therefore, he was manifest in him. The Godhead was there, not that it got into him, but that it was there. It was there, yes. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. What? I think you even brought up, you know, the point about Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. There you go. It's hard for me to violate that. What? One, I believe. Yeah. That's the truth. And... Uh, yeah, the um, and I might add, it says Jesus Christ, not God. That's right, Jesus Christ. You're absolutely right. And um, 
could there have been a time when God had a people chosen unto himself, mm -hmm. given in union to the Son, when they stood without a mediator? I don't think so. Can't be. I, I, I don't, at this point, don't think so. Uh, well, the only mediator between God and man is the man, man Christ Jesus. It doesn't say the fleshly man, it just says nope, man. Nope. Just says I man. Think read, I think we read before, he said, I knew a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't tell. That's right. So a man could exist with it or without it. That's right. That's right. Well, he stood as a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Now, I don't know what happened before the foundation of the world, but he pretty much uh, explains that to me. He yeah. was there. And I see him through the Old Testament. Of course, people laugh at me and said, I'm no, no, so heavenly minded, ain't no earthly good. But I think that was Christ there. I do too, um, brother. I do too. You also. I believe yeah. Jesus Christ carried, carried the, the burden all the way through. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's beginning mm -hmm. and end. So if you want to put a timeline on him, then have at it. But I, I'm going to leave them things to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. told us enough. He's told us enough. Yep. He's told us enough. Uh, yep. We ought to be satisfied just what his word says. Yeah. But what what um what was that? But you got to get off there. Let me let me go. Corral this this boy here. I'm glad he's listening, but I don't want him to interfere. Okay. That's what that's what always bothered me about your tripersonal trinitarians. Yeah, is they always to me went beyond what was written. Yep, mm -hmm. and I admit that I was one at on one time. I uh, I me kind too. Of followed, I kind of followed what I was told and taught and so forth, but. Uh, of course, those times make you realize don't depend on man. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I mean, I would, we were all guilty of believing that nonsense that they told us. Yeah. I would, I mean, I, I would I, vacillate I, on that one. I mean, I'd, uh, if you'd asked me today, and I'd say, yeah, three, three eternal persons in the Godhead. You'd ask me two weeks from now, particularly if I'd been reading Thompson, I'd say, mm -hmm. no, yeah. man, the only person in the Godhead is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't only, only, one is, <laughs> only only one is your savior, right? Right. Jehovah is your savior, and there is no other name given under heaven mm -hmm. other than Christ. And, and no, man, no man is going to see God and live. Yep. You can see God through Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, Christ. Christ. I we're doomed. Yeah. yeah. I, I I I don't don't bother me one bit. I'm not going to lose no sleep over that. He's my savior. And if he wants, if, if he's got to straighten me out there in the days to come, ages to come, I, I'm sure he'll straighten me out perfectly. <laughs> so that's a simple, simple minded trust. Mm -hmm. Who do you trust? Yeah, you can go on and, and, and quote 100 different people, and they'll mm -hmm. confuse you to no end. That's what I found. I've read the uh, institutes, battle institutes, read them, and I read uh, all them, uh, Matthew, Henry, and uh, I forget all the rest of them there. Any, any of you fellows want them commentaries, you're welcome to them. I'll, I'll <laughs> deliver them on September. They don't do me a world of good. Mm -hmm. I said here, read one verse of the Bible, and I was telling uh, Angelo here about, uh, about uh, trusting in God. And the tears are coming to my eyes, crying like a baby. Big granddaddy, talking to the grandson, crying like a baby. But that's how dear he is to me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You know, the Mormons would tell you, you get hold of one of these Mormons, uh, they call them elders, but uh, I thought they were saying Elmer. Yeah. Uh, anyway, they were saying uh, uh, Jesus was a, a goat or a lamb or something uh that god created and mm -hmm. had no god in him whatsoever and mm -hmm. i said well that ain't right you know i mean you can go on and on and say that and, but, but you got no proof of that yeah he's the lamb of god but he's also god and mm -hmm. 
but what we ought to be thinking about is not so much as all these things about when and where and if and what and if and all that, but can you imagine God, God mm -hmm. uh, bearing with us? Because <laughs> if, he, if he if he spent 10 seconds with me, that's more than I deserve. But I, I do appreciate that um, I can know God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, uh, that's right. And I, okay. I appreciate what he'd done for me. And uh, as Chet and I said many, many times, talking over things for the service and after service, mm -hmm. the simplicity in Christ. There's such a beauty to that. Mm -hmm. I, I, we don't need to confuse things. Just right, right. in Christ. And he works to us poor old sinners. Can you believe it? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. a could proclaim the glory of God. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's just beyond my comprehension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you guys understand it, but I, I can't. I can't grasp it. Yes. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> well, I believe that uh, sometimes, and this is just something I'll throw out. Sometimes we hear the sound of words, and it sounds so good we gobble it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think if we're going to be uh, Take this as you would, students of the scripture, we we need to know the sense of the words. That's you it. Know, well, isn't that what it says in Ezra and Nehemiah? Yeah. That he read the book and caused them to understand the sense. Yeah, the sense of them. Not the letter, but the sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, to me, that's what uh, that's what uh, gospel gospel preaching is. Right. I is want to you, think, Paul, didn't Paul say something to Timothy like that? Uh, I may be wrong. Well, you may be right. I don't remember. Well, I, I do believe that the words that the preaching is is formed by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he's speaking them words to, to a, a host of people. It may be 10, maybe 15, maybe 100. I don't know. But mm -hmm. to them, the people sitting in them pews, myself included, mm -hmm. get a message from God through the of the word, but it, it just nails the thing right to the floor. But mm -hmm. you know, I, what I see is a lot of people, they walk out there and they're worried about the getting the food ready for the after service meal and uh, cleaning up the church. And uh, they're worried about other things. And what they get, I don't know. I'm not a judge of them on that. But boy, I'll tell you, when, when the preacher says a word to me and I hear a word come, and he might be an Armenian preacher, believe it or not. And he says a word, that word re-echoes in my heart and it just, it just opens up a world uh, that I have no, no, no meaning of. And uh, I don't know if you guys ever experienced that or not, but uh, I remember Jimmy Swagger was preaching on the black and white TV one day, and I was home for lunch, trying to warm up, getting some lunch, and he was, oh, I turned it on, and here it comes Jimmy <laughs> He was preaching on uh, uh, Lazarus, resurrection, and he held his Bible up, and he says, uh, if, if Jesus didn't say Lazarus, all the dead in Christ would come forth. And I just <laughs> hollered and carried on. Well, I don't know about Jimmy Swagger, what he believed and who he was from, thing like that. But those words, and that was encouraging to me at the time. And uh, I wasn't cold no more after it anyway. So the good Lord provided a little, little warmth in, uh, in poor old Jimmy. I don't know if he's still living or not. but uh, He is. Oh, he is. He's, got, just, a, he's got a network on satellite TV. Is he a millionaire still or did he lose? Probably. His oh. Well, God, God bless him. The Lord's got him there for some reason. I can't tell you what that is, but I do believe same, same reason that he has Satan. Uh, well, let's see here, Brother Wayne. Let's see. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith. Amen. 
and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast obtained. Also, uh, just, Timothy, that's just quick. Yeah, he said in the first, he said in first chapter and verse thirteen of Second Timothy, hold fast the form. There it is. Words, sound words which thou hast heard, and of me, yeah. in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Mm. And if I understand mm. that word form, uh, well, let's see. It actually says a summary exposition. It says okay. a, set, a form or a pattern. So I believe it's important. And then what is it? Uh, one and nine says holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a sense you can say a word and it has a certain sound, but that's not what we're looking for. No. Didn't the eunuch that you've spoken of for a little bit, Brother Robert, didn't he say, what does this mean? Is he talking about himself or is he talking about some other man? That's right. Sure it did. In other words, explain it to me. Explain it. Mm -hmm. Give me the sense of it. Yeah. Come on. This is healthy words. Yep. Yeah, sound is uh, good health. Yeah. If the man's getting sound of body or sound of mind, mm -hmm. means he's in good shape, huh? Wasn't it Solomon that said that the preacher sought out acceptable words? Acceptable. There true. you go. That's very true. That's it. That don't mean that they're acceptable to the goats, does it? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I believe some of that believe some of that what we were involved in, in discussion today, talking about those unsearchable riches. Yep. And Paul, as you brought out, Brother Wayne, that he was proclaiming those. Yes, he was. I think that's proclaiming to them and those that had ears to hear them could receive them, you know, mm -hmm. receive and understand what those unsearchable riches in Christ. Amen. Or as brother, we Matthew know in was, part. We prophesy in part. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just see a little bit of it, and if that little bit is as glorious as we perceive it to be. Yeah. What must the whole be? Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Mm. Like uh, bro Brother Hoyt said, his SL was still learning. I yeah. Yeah. Think, <laughs> couldn't help but think when he said that uh, every time I feel a little puffed up, I'm sure that don't happen to y'all, but every time mm. I feel a little puffed up, uh, I come to realize I get more ignorant and ignorant every day when it comes to spiritual things. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. That's to keep us humble, Brother Wayne. That is. Because we certainly wouldn't keep ourselves humble. No. <laughs> and, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and Brother you know, Wayne, as, what, you, as well as anybody else, I can get really puffed up. That's what was wrong with Mother Eve in the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was puffed up with some pride, thinking that she could be as God and know good and evil. Amen. You know. And she was deceived. And she was. Of course, if God made you subject to vanity, says so you can believe yep. in hope. Yeah. He said hope, I, I assumed he meant when he said that. And that's one one of the things that Brother Robert's been bringing out about that that creation mm -hmm. and that it was subject to vanity, not willingly. 
but by the same who subjected the same to, in, to hope. And I hadn't ever looked at it in the way that he mm -hmm. he brought it out, but it does make a lot of sense to me. Can I just talk about sense? <laughs> I want to just interrupt for a moment, Brother Lackey. The Boswells are going to try to come on. Well, go ahead. Yeah, I got her. I got her um, instant message, and I'll tell her. You know, they, they just got in and they want to go come ahead, in. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I just responded to her. Okay, that's great. Bye. Yeah, she got my message, so yeah. They're looking forward to coming on. All right. Well, we'll let them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised Brother John didn't come on. Now I'm a little worried about him. You know, because nobody knew he was sick. And I'm the big mouth that announced it in the church. I didn't even realize he didn't tell any of them. Oh, goodness. If you're not going to tell us things, then how do we know to pray for you if you need to be prayed for? You got to tell us what's going on. Well, you need to pray for him anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He spoke very well on Sunday. I was so, it was so comforting to listen to him and to Brother Mike, too. And it's amazing that comprehension always impresses me. Um, you know, uh, Brother John is always worried about, you know, that he doesn't have uh, fancy speech, but who needs fancy speech? If I wanted fancy, I could go to those stupid Manhattan theologians and get fancy there. Yes. And they're just as useless. Yes. Yes. You know, because it, it became very clear to me they couldn't care less about the Lord's people. They couldn't, they don't care. They want numbers, not uh, elect people, just numbers. Oh, yeah, of course they do. That's what they're taught makes them a success. Mm -hmm. So it makes any business a success. Yeah, customers. Customers. Paying customers. That's right. Not just lookers, paying customers. Okay. Uh, well, turn okay, that we'll inventory. <laughs> as long as they don't get in a creek and the muddy the waters, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I mean, when I joined the Conservative Baptist mm -hmm. way back, oh, the so first bad. place I had was on tithing. Never went before the church. You want to read that? You want to read that verse? I'll hold this camera for you. Oh, yeah, John, they believe you're stingy and greedy if you don't tithe. Yeah, I'm stingy and greedy, and I tell them I'm Jewish too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, man, that's you're the, the one supposed to be bringing the tithe into the storehouse. I would say that that's a good example of what we were talking about. There is not a single person on this earth that tithes according to the law. Nope. Not sure not. One anywhere. Nope. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to tithe everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Firstborn calf. <laughs> First things out of the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to see somebody do that. And if they'll do that, maybe I can say, okay, you believe in tithing. That's right. There you go. I even, the boy. Jews, even the Jews don't do the, they're supposed to tithe the first fruits. Yeah. And what they call tithing, they would take out the 10% of the fruit and throw it in the ocean. Yeah, I had a boy at work one day. He was he was making a a statement to me and I guess you might call it in a sense of a bragful manner, you know. He was 
talk about how he paid his tithes and he did all this and he done all that at his church and you know it reminded me of the one that stood over there and said i thank thee lord that i'm not like other men i do this and that and then the old publican over there just wouldn't even lift up his head you know that have mercy on me lord and and i I said just keep waiting I think, I, think, I think to myself sometimes, you know, I say, you know, you, you, we all subject to that nature of that. Oh, yeah. A damn it, man. So, but. Yes, we are, aren't we? No matter whether we want to be or not. It's yeah. just part of our being. Yep. He's born there. And we'll have him till till we die, whether we want him or not. Yeah. Brother Lackey, they're still trying to get on. She just um, she said she's still waiting. Okay, let me see. There they are. Ah, good. All right, tell her I I finally got her. There they are. Well, do we do you have a few minutes? Uh, Angela wanted to read a, a Bible verse she learned today. Is, is that all Go right? Ahead, Angela. Um, it's Saint Matthew. Um, I think it's um, I think it's. 13, and I'm just going to read it. Yay, or the salt of the earth, but if if the salt had lost the Savior were with, shall it be salted? It mm-hmm. is then served God for nothing but mm-hmm. to be cast, no, cast mm-hmm. out and to be trodden under foot of men, yet or the light of the world, a city that is set on hill cannot be be hid, neither do men light candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and it give give its light unto all all that are in ha- in the house. Mm. Very good. Thank you, young Very man. Good. Hey man, hey, man brother you. Robert. Yeah. We had some of that reading you'd be talking about. Right. So is <laughs> Yep. Out of the mouth of babes, I will exact praise. Yep. Mm-hmm. He will exact praise. Said. Well, I, I've, uh, I've had the occasion to uh, preach a little bit on that. I said, he, he, God just squeezes it out of you. But that mm-hmm. probably wasn't the proper way to probably didn't know much about the Greek, but uh, yeah. that's why I feel about it. He just squeezes it out of you. Amen. Praise his name. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Angelo. And thank you, fellas. Welcome. Good job. Brother, brethren, uh, brother Eric brought up this speaker. Uh, Subject of vanity. Somebody tell me once again what the creature is. I believe it's a new creation. I believe it's a new creation because that was made subject to vanity because it's in that vessel. Mm. The old, uh, that earthen mm. vessel, that vessel of clay. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that's what I believe it is. 
Good, brother. I, I thought that was so. I just wanted to make double sure. So I know most of the folks that believe it's talking about the rocks, the hills, the mountains, the, the oceans, the waters, the sky. And That's the whole creation. That comes later. Yeah, whole creation. <laughs> That's the whole creation. He's going to get to that, but that's not what the creature that made subject to vanity was. I don't think. Muted. Yeah, you're there. Well, I guess maybe I I used to look at it in a different different way, and but I kind of like what Brother Roberts brought forth there. I I kind of looked at that creation as. The man, the damn man himself, being the creature, and that he was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by the same that subjected the, the same to hope. You know, that's how I, at one time, was had an understanding of it. Right. That you know, when in the if we go back and we talk about in the garden, mm -hmm. that how Adam was created, he was created with the mm -hmm. Brother Robert sometimes says we, it was an inclination and uh, towards uh, sinning to doing that what what the Lord had purposed to happen. Yep. So that that creature was a subject to that, not willing, but by the same that subjected him to hope. Mm -hmm. Now that's just the way I I kind of understood it at, at a time, and but I I like Brother Robert the way he. What he says about it, I think that's a... Well, if if you go back and look historically at what old Baptists have written about it, you're going to find both those viewpoints. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Yep. You're going to find that... Um, I believe it was Silas Duran took that position that, that you were talking just now. And others took the took the other position. There was some discussion on it, the signs at one time in the eighteen hundreds. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I think uh, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So what we're discussing now, someone else has discussed before us. More than I do yeah. believe. Oh yeah. I sure would like to know what they learned. <laughs> you know, it's like we were talking the other day, Brother Wayne, about when Paul was preaching up to midnight. Yeah. And, you know, uh, just being there and listening to what he was saying, you know, and going that long a time. You know, we, we sit around, if we hear somebody talk much longer than an hour, our, our flesh is beginning to get weak and weary and tiresome. Yeah. Yeah. But, to have him to preach the minute. It's kind of like, uh, I know I'm probably taking too much liberty, but uh, I've often thought in reading the scriptures, uh, I believe that Brother Lackey was 10 miles from here and holding the meat and I'd be there. Okay? Mm. I'd be saying to my family and friends, let's go hear Brother Lackey over here. He's preaching. Mm. I'm sorry there's not a church over here he'd probably preach in. But, uh, <laughs> I've often wondered reading about John was baptizing, Christ was baptizing. Does it seem does it seem possible that John might have said, "Hey, Christ is across the hill over here, uh, preaching to the multitudes," and tell his disciples, "Let's let's go over and listen to what he has to say." It, is that that's, I'm sure that's taking a little too much liberty, but I just don't think there were a whole lot different. We are. No. no, not in that regard. I don't think so no. either. No. I think we had the same problems that they had. We had the same benefits in Christ that they had. Right. Um, my understanding is poor sometimes, but what comforts me is my understanding doesn't have to be perfect. Right. Because I wasn't chosen in Christ because of a perfect understanding. Amen. That's right, Brother John. Amen. Amen. None of us would be chosen if that was the case. I mean, sometimes I try to study like you all guys do, and I just I can't do it. My mind wanders and it goes here and there, but I can look at a verse and meditate on it. Yep. Amen. And I can meditate 
yep. for for days. I thank Brother John that that's some of the richest blessings I've had is mm -hmm. God putting a scripture in my heart and mind and meditating on it throughout the day. Yep. Uh, yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's it. Some of the mm -hmm. richest times with the Lord is, is that. Not, yeah. mm -hmm. not reading the black and white in a book. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I admit that what I'm thinking about is in this book, but mm -hmm. uh, it's just the meditation upon it. And the Lord is mm -hmm. pleased to show me a lot uh, a lot of times through that method rather than getting down and pouring over a verse or a scripture. So, right. A lot of times we talk about uh, providing mm -hmm. me with uh, food to meditate upon throughout the week. Uh, yeah. I've been blessed by that. Yeah. I know sometimes even meditating on a word mm -hmm. and a phrase like um, I love the name in I think it's in Isaiah 53. He shall be called, excuse me, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. which means God is with us. Yep. And I didn't realize how literally that meant he was with us. He's yep. with us. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it was like a light bulb went off. Well, I admit that even today I had <clears throat> I had a period of refreshing and thinking upon the unsearchable riches of Christ and uncertainty they are. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, I, I there's a storehouse there that's just full of those riches. And what blesses me is that I know that every single one of them is for God's people. Yes. yes. Amen. And mm -hmm. that's the truth. For their nourishment, for their for their growth, uh, for their necessity. Mm -hmm. How often I wished I spent more time going to him for my morning nourishment and my daily nourishment. Amen. That's the truth. And you don't see the goat herders doing that. And what I mean by goat herder is like a Southern Baptist preacher. Yeah. All puffed up with himself thinking, oh, they're going to get a blessing because I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You should be honored by my presence. Yeah. Present yourself somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They generally don't like me, and mm -hmm. feelings mutual. I remember one time I was walking, and my legs were hurting me so badly. And I'm walking, the last place I needed to go was Dollar Tree. Yeah. And here's this idiot handing out tracks. <laughs> and I said, I am a Christian. Yeah, but take the why? Why do I need that stupid piece of paper? I have an entire Bible. Well, you have to see specific verses. Well, if I need to see specific verses, the Lord will bring it to mind. Amen. Right. You know, and I told him, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and they come. Yeah. I don't see you in that. <laughs> and then I found out the old guy was trying to butter his way into heaven because a neighbor that was friends with him uh, uh, said he was dying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now you're trying to get as many Christians in, you think, as you can. I didn't tell her about that because I, I, I was not gracious to him yeah. because he was so persistent that I just, I didn't want to deal with him. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, there's uh, the only time, only time something like that ever I ever thought about is, you know, in the old days when I was a kid, uh -huh. and even later, a little bit later, mm -hmm. the Catholic hospitals were mostly staffed with nuns. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Yes. I always said, man, if I get sick, take me to the Catholic hospital. Oh, yeah. I said, why? I said, I want those people that are going to work their way to heaven to help. I'm going to help them get there. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to take care of me good so that, that they yeah. can, they can uh, put another uh, star in the crown. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe before we go tonight, you can deal with a scripture that I've thought about uh, I don't know, a few days. 
we looked at the first part of <clears throat> Second Corinthians five some time ago, but would somebody tell me what their views are on uh, the scripture that says? Um, uh, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm -hmm. Everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether mm -hmm. it be good or bad. That is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to hear the views, Brother Lackey, of you and others uh, of that judgment seat of Christ here spoken of is. And what are the works done in the body? I believe the works that are believer are the works of Christ, that in righteousness that he gives his believers. So the believer will stand before the judgment seat and not be judged. But the goats, when he separated the sheep from the goats, they're going to be judged. And they're going to be found wanting and lying because what they claim they did, they never did. But that's. I think in the study and contemplating on a little bit. Uh, the word appear means to be manifest. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. Be made manifest. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> to the thing it says for we all, now I, I assume he's talking about God's people in Corinth and himself and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we all must be manifest Mm -hmm. before the judgment or beam of seed of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then it says that, that scripture that's real troubling to me, that he may receive the things, and by the way, done is not in the original, I guess. Right. Things done in body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, I read an article. <clears throat> I've never had a satisfactory answer on it for myself. But I read an article where one of the old Baptists said it, the beam of seat of Christ was the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The reason I'm looking through these, I believe that's what Bibi said, too. I don't remember who I was reading now. I, somebody sent me something, I think. What are you reading? I know he wrote on it because I've read it, and I'm pretty sure that's what he said. It, maybe his editorial on it is the most satisfactory thing I ever read on it. My own poor feeble views, I don't know that it even got any. I, I can't answer most, most of the things people would ask. What book are you reading on? You know. What do you think, Brother Pete? Hey, how you doing? All right. What do you think about Second Corinthians five ten? That judgment seat. We're discussing it. And working over to meet now, so I just got in. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna put you on the spot, Lord. No. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do that to you. Uh, I'm sure I'm glad to hear y'all's voice, though. And the world will stand on. Hear you, Brother Pete. <laughs> and Sister Vicky. And Sister Vicky. Yep. Thank y'all. I'm glad to be here, but I'm tired. <laughs> that you are. Are you? Uh, we've been we've been mowing grass and uh, that church don't look so big till you start cleaning. 
Goodness gracious. Did you say that was First Corinthians 5.10? I did. 2 Corinthians. Corinthians 5.10. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. Uh, thank you, Brother Wayne. Is that what you call the uh, great white throne judgment? What you're talking about? Well, we're talking about the judgment seat of Christ. The only place in the kitchen that I know of. They, they call it the great white throne, some of them Baptist, yeah. where you're all going to be judged for the sins of your, what you've done. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure some do it that way. Yeah, I'm going Either. to go back to form. I'm going to go back to form. Is, is it true that Jesus Christ said it is finished for his people? Yep, that's right. I believe then, that. Yeah. You believe you're washed in the blood? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. who's going to bring a charge against you? Yeah. Nobody. Uh, anyway. Oh, oh, I thought, well, maybe, they're, well, you're saying you're going to be charged again. No, sir. You're going to no. plead the blood of Jesus Christ, worthy as a lamb, and uh, and uh, uh, as they say in Revelation, that's what you're going to plead. And when they bring you up there, I'm sure there'd be people standing there saying, well, Cliff, I, you did this, you did this. Well, maybe so. But the blood of Jesus Christ is more powerful than any accusation that the heathen or anybody else can make. And I stand mm -hmm. true on that. And then Baptists didn't like me for saying that. Oh, yeah. so they, wanted, yeah. they, they wanted me to, to, to repent of, of every little sin I've done. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like them. I don't like them. Don't get me wrong. But I'll mm -hmm. tell you what. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I got no other plea. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Would that put, me up there if you want. put me up there if you want. I'll just, just tell you what I just said now. I, I don't know, but I just think that somewhere I read that we're appearing for his judgment seat as in this world, you know, when, when I can't explain it, I don't guess, but in this world we're living in now, mm -hmm. the things mm -hmm. that we're doing, you know, if we are, if the spirit is in us and the spirit is convicting us of the things that we're doing wrong, that mm -hmm. we're it's appearing before his judgment seat. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. If that, yeah. but yeah, it makes perfect sense to me, brother. Yeah. I think we've already been judged, condemned, and again, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. done a done deal it's it's over i think it's somewhere in there where he says some of them he'll say depart from me for i never knew you but then mm -hmm. on the other hand he said you know some about my good and faithful servant or i, I can't mm -hmm. i can't do scripture i have to have it if, read if we're one of believe. if if we're one of the lack we our sins have been covered That's okay. mm -hmm. and and the water washed us as clean. We'll stand as a pure white driven snow before God Almighty because Jesus covered us. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't think if it's, if it's one charge held against us, then what Jesus done was null and void. All right. Yeah. I, had yeah. a, I, had, I had a conditionalist or a workmonger, whichever you want to say, uh, <laughs> talk to me about this scripture and others. And he said that uh, we're still going to have to give account before uh, Christ's uh, judgment seat at the end time, of course, is what he was talking about. And uh, I told him then that if, if, if I had to enumerate all of my sins since the Lord brought me to a knowledge of him, mm -hmm. uh, I'd, I'd be the most embarrassed man on the face of the earth. Oh, mm -hmm. Lord. No. You just thought you would be. Yeah, but I guarantee you, he thought he had a lot to bring up to God for good. Mm, I'm yeah. sure. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. Page, volume seven, page 228. Okay. Deals with this in about 10 pages. 
on it. Wow. So I ain't going to read it all. I'm just going to hit the high points. The subject presented involves the following consideration. First, the judgment seat of Christ. Second, who must appear before it, when, and for what purpose? Our firm conviction on that subject is that the Lord Jesus Christ is now occupying his judgment seat. Uh -huh. And all judgment is vested in him. The judgment seat, however, of which the apostle is speaking in our text is that on which he presides as head over all things to his church. Amen. Amen. As it is written, the Lord shall judge his people. His judgment seat is his throne, and God has said, yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when our Redeemer had finished transgressions and made an end of sin, when he had met and canceled all the demands of the law and justice, redeemed his people from the curse and also from the dominion of the law, he was exalted with the right hand of the Father and sat down with him in his throne. And is forever set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Yeah. Um, we cannot believe that he who is the same yesterday, today, and forever changes from place to place and from seat to seat. Amen. <laughs> he has set down forever upon his throne and his throne is his mercy seat and it is also his judgment seats. Amen. And all his decisions are immut as immutable, irrevocable, and decisive now as they can ever be at any subsequent period. Mm. Mm -hmm. The church of God is the judgment seat of Christ. Giant Zion is the holy hill on which God has set his king. And that a glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. Now. Let us inquire to whom it is said in our text, for we must all appear. The epistle in which these words are written is thus addressed to the church of God, which is at Corinth, yeah. with all the saints which are in Achaia. Mm -hmm. And these are still further described as people who know they have a building with God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, a people who groan in the earthly house of this tabernacle and who earnestly desire to be clothed upon with their house which is from heaven. And still further, a people whom God hath wrought for this self-same purpose. A people who walk by faith and not by sight. Yep. Mm -hmm. None but members of this kingdom have access mm -hmm. to the judgment seat of Christ. Amen, I like that. I like that. They have mm -hmm. come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, and to God, the judge of all. Yep. All others stand before the mountain that might be touched and that burned with fire and blackness and darkness and tempest in the voice of words. Yeah. But those who are redeemed of God and, and from redeemed to God and from the dominion of the law now stand in this peculiar relation to him as subjects of his spiritual kingdom and amenable to him as their judge. And to them is secured the high and happy privilege of standing before his judgment seat. Amen. Rather than, than him saying this is something we ought to fear, Bibi says this is a high and happy privilege that we have to stand <laughs> yeah, before the yeah. judgment seat of God. Amen. Yeah. Because they have full confidence in the righteousness of his judgment <laughs> and confide in all his decisions. And their desire and prayer is, search me, O oh God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Amen. That's right. Uh, let's see. That's good, brother. That's good. Yeah. I mean, he, he just goes, Amen. there's no other judgment seat to which they can so confidently appeal. God has wrought all their works in them. And of his own works, he alone can judge with unerring righteousness. All others are condemned already, and the wrath of God abideth on them. Amen. He'll not accuse them unto the Father, for they have one that accuseth them, even Moses, whom they trust. What then, for what purpose must they all appear before the judgment seat? The impression has generally prevailed, as we've already remarked, that the judgment seat will not be assumed by Christ till after the resurrection. And that immediately after the resurrection, all the human family in one promiscuous mass shall be assembled before the bar of God when the exact state of every one shall be ascertained and determined 
and the final destiny of each shall be announced by the eternal judge. That God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man which he has appointed. And that that day or period shall be after the resurrection, we fully believe. But that judgment will not be a court of inquisition or investigation, for the dead shall all be judged according to the things which are already written in the books. Amen. The Lord already knows them that are his. The saints have already been judged and acquitted and freely justified through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, nor will any investigation of the condition of the ungodly be required, for they're condemned already. Right. And the wrath of God even now abides on them. So the judgment of both saints and sinners is already decided, pronounced, and recorded in the books. Amen. And the day of judgment, which shall be at the resurrection, is the day when all that is written of the destiny of saints and sinners shall be fully executed. So, uh, yeah, man, he, he's got a, I'm, I'm going to just stop there. Well, let's, let's look at the, right at the end of it here. When, therefore, and so long as we stand in the church of God, we are before the judgment seat of Christ. And all Amen. our walk and conversation must be tested by the laws of Christ. And all the decisions from the judgment seat are bound on earth and bound in heaven. The necessity of our standing before the judgment seat of Christ is because we're incompetent to judge for ourselves. The Lord is our judge, our lawgiver, and our king. And his judgment seat is as indispensable to our good and his glory as his mercy seat. Remember, Christians, your holy calling, your birthright privilege, and submit to the authority of Christ in his church. None but Christians stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be tried by the laws of his spiritual kingdom. And it is of God's abounding mercy and grace that we can appeal in all our strengths to him who is not only our judge, but also our advocate. As in the words of the poet, is there ambition in my heart? Search gracious God and see, and turn each cursed idol out that dares to rival thee. Amen. That's Mr. Not, BB's view of it. That's not the one I read, but that sure is good. <laughs> I thought that was good. That's the best I've ever read on the subject. What page was that again, Brother Lackey? In volume 228. 228? 228, volume 7. I'm going to look that up. Brother. And I, I like that. Yeah, I like it too. too. I'll tell you what, old BB, uh, uh, there's a few things I disagree with him on, but not many. Yeah. He could say it well. I don't, I, he could say it as good as anybody. And better than most. Clear, yeah. Mine. Well, yeah, I've remember. said it before. I know if I live, it. I'll say it again. BB was the popular voice of the old school Baptist movement. He Man. gave it a voice that the majority of the people could understand and understand plainly. Yeah. yeah. Amen. He had that ability. For sure. Yep. He had an ability that few men have. He could communicate with his pen. Uh, never having heard him preach and not having any tapes of him for some reason. I don't know, but I'm going to say as, as well or better than he could speak it, probably. Probably. So. probably. Well, that, that was powerful in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yes, uh, it was. I mean, most of, most of what he wrote was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, remember, I remember reading something, Brother Lackey, and, and I know we're not going to stay here all night, but I uh, I remember reading something where Trot kind of had an issue with uh, BB over the general resurrection or something. Yes, uh, general judgment. General judgment. Something about it. Uh, he'd said at an associational meeting or he preached at an association. Yep, meeting. it's the end of volume one, the beginning of volume two of BB's editorials. Okay. okay. The last one in volume one and the Second one in volume two or the I first one in volume, volume two? One. I never got volume one. You volume never got a volume one? I, never had. Yeah. I was curious because I, I did read where uh, Trot kind of took him to task and uh, told him he uh, 
felt like he was uh, trying to say there was no judgment, no general judgment, and so forth. Well, I and, to read what he said. <laughs> and, and he probably was, <laughs> in the sense that the Arminians think there's going to be a general judgment. Yeah, right. Um, I find Trot, and I don't know how to put this to where it doesn't sound like I'm, I'm uh, trying to uh, put him down, and I'm not, uh, because I respect the man as much as I respect Baby and Thompson. Um, Trot was a learned man. Probably mm -hmm. one of the two or three most learned of the original old Baptists. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes he took issue with the prevailing sentiment, confessional sentiment of the day, rightly so. But other times, like in that general judgment bit, he upheld that in a way that I think is, was a little strange. Um, of course, it seems like from, uh, from reading a couple of things by Trot on prophecy, he may have been a premillennialist. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't believe BB was. I believe BB was an all millennialist. I've heard. I've heard. I, I I think I read something where he dealt with Matthew twenty four, and he seemed to give it the proper interpretation, even though he had that second interpretation. You know, a little thing. You talking about it, Trot? I think that was Trot. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I find Trot to be a little bit too technical for me sometimes. You know, just. Uh, I, I like him, and I'm I I don't have much that I disagree with him on, but uh, it's just yeah the way he words it is just a little bit too technical and hard to follow sometimes. But. He is hard to follow. I uh, I got used to reading BB, and you can read BB one time through most everything he wrote and understand it. Yeah. Trot most of what he wrote, you're gonna have to read it twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a few of them you're going to have to read three times. That's kind of the way I find your brother Paxton. <laughs> uh, brother Paxton, yes, I, I think so too. There times. are some parts that uh, I have to read it twice before I falsely accuse him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I finally found his first article in the Primitive Baptist. So, oh, good. Lord willing, we'll take that up and. Um, and then his next one after that, um, because the first one's just a short, short one. But what I want to get to on him is in 1841 or 42, where uh, everybody started railing on him, uh, of his views. And I, I'm not going to tell you what they are, uh, because it's. Uh, How come we a picture of it's one of them things that uh, if I told you, you'd say, "Huh? What? No." But but Gil, I believe, mentioned something close to what he says, uh, at least in in his commentary on the passage he's dealing with. So, um, well, you know that passage we we're just dealing with. I was so disappointed in Gil. When oh I, man, I, that, that was horrible. I, I just kind of like, no, you're kidding me, Gil. I'm, I hate to say this, but as far as the commentary goes in the New Testament parts, I find I'm disappointed more than I'm elated. Yeah, I, that's kind of mm -hmm. what I'm finding too. Yeah. Now the Old Testament's another story. I mean, he, he's got some, some good thoughts on the Old Testament part of it, but the New Testament, man, some of it, I'm sitting there thinking, and this is the man that wrote Cause of God and Truth, mm -hmm. driving every Arminian, uh, driving the Arminianism out of, the supposed Arminianism out of every text in the Bible. <laughs> uh, 
Mm. I have a question or a statement, and it's going to sound shocking at first, but let me finish through. Where Gil says the law is our, um, what did he say about the, 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 the law? Brother Lackey. Rule of life. Yes, rule of life, yes. And in a sense, if he means it in a sense that, yeah, it's our rule of life to show us what we can do and what we can accomplish, yes, the law is good because it'll show us, it'll you know, drive us to Christ. Because I know the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Yeah. yeah. I haven't read pink in a long time, and I'd like to eventually get a pink. Um, I, I'm not sure, and maybe I'm wrong, just a suspicion I have. I have never met a man that claimed to be a child of God mm -hmm. who was driven to Christ by fear of hell and destruction. Oh, no, you're right. Every, That's every, right. Everyone I've talked to, it was the goodness of God in the face of Jesus Christ that melted their hearts. Yes. It's yes. the grace yes. of God that leads you to repentance, according yes. to the scripture, not the beating you over the head with the law. Uh, I believe that that's the true experience of God's people. Is uh, Like John with the mother, we stand at the foot of the cross and we watch the glory of glorious son of God. Uh, bleeding and crucified and dying for us and Amen. it's the Amen. goodness of god mm -hmm. that uh, lead us to repentance Amen. Amen. i knew i know a supposed primitive baptist preacher who at the time lived in memphis tennessee served a church that met every sunday and preached for over a year on the ten commandments uh -huh. my Year. I can't remember how much over a year, mm -hmm. um, but he preached for over a year on the Ten Commandments. That would have gotten old fast. <laughs> that, that surprises me, him being a primitive, but I'll tell you, a lot of sovereign graders do that year after year after year after year. Well, yeah. these cats, uh, some, of these, some of these primitives around in the conditionalist yeah, uh, would be better served being sovereign grace. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because, uh, well, this guy was in in fellowship with a bunch of them that were on the outs with with the majority <laughs> of the old line, mm -hmm. and well. At the big meeting in Cincinnati, those guys would have not been welcome. Mm. Now, so, now that Bradley's gone back to, to the missionary part, gone and added missionism, those same guys are Sunday preachers there now. <laughs> oh, They're Sunday preachers at the big Cincinnati meeting. Yeah. Yep. Because they 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 were trying to bring missions into the, the conditional primitives twenty years before they actually got it done. Yep. Yep. Well that's basically what a lot of these primitives are around here. Yeah. Some of them you know, I know. Uh yes. the big missionism boy, we gotta go to the Philippines, we gotta go to the India. And uh, the wonderful work we're doing over there, and I sound sound just like the old Southern Baptist days. Her, her going over to India with yeah, the yeah. Jeff Harris. Yeah, like there wasn't nobody next door. Right. <laughs> well, I what was said, that song you? What's that contemporary song you read this morning? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that. Like it, it, Something like that. You, you go yeah, yeah. We keep you our missions overseas. <laughs> um, well, I told one of them one time. I wrote him, and I said, "It's time you took the name Primitive off your sign." And uh, I think he would have, but his congregation was gone up in arms. And I said, "Listen, 
if you want to send someone over to preach to the blacks overseas, I said, you, you telling me that there's no black people in that city that hadn't heard the gospel of truth? Why aren't you preaching to them? Or go to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. He can stay right there. Outside. <laughs> yeah. Go to Chicago. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't come on. Let's let's just be honest about it. it mm -hmm. Sure, it don't have the charm as Haiti Truth. or Africa. Truth of the matter, most of them are called to St. John's in the Caribbean during the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. I won't be called the Grand Bahama Island. <laughs> yeah. Or Bermuda. 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 Yeah. That'd be a good place. Lord called me to Bermuda I knew in the winter. I knew a preacher in Trinidad years ago and pretty good. <coughs> well, I preached pretty good and everything. And I asked somebody about him a few years later and he became a millionaire. Bought up a lot of land in Trinidad and shyster mm. deals and so forth. And no longer preaching. He was just making money. Hot dog. That's probably where he should have been. That's right. That's why the Lord sent him down there. Yeah. That was where his unsearchable riches were that, huh? Yeah, that's true, brother. Eric. He had searchable riches. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. He could find his. He knew about that's right. it. He had his part in this life, right? Yeah, yep, just like uh, that other rich man. That's right. Well, the Lord has been pleased to bless me with poverty, y'all. I'm not very wealthy, but I hope that he makes me, causes me to be content with whatsoever he has assigned to me. Amen. That's it. Yeah, thank so you. Brothers, I'm fixing, to, I'm fixing to sign off. Say good night. Me too. Enjoyed the discussion. You Thank mentioned. you, Brother Robert, for reading that. Had a brother Stevie yeah. there. It sure yeah, helped well, shine yeah. some light on on the subject. And and yeah. hopefully we'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Lord yeah. willing, brother. Good, good to see, see you, brother. You, brother. Brother you, you too. too. All right. you have good, a night, night. All right. good night, Good to see y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Brother right. Pete, Sister Vicki. Yes. I'm probably not going to make it down there. Oh man, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> man, I, my heart's already broke. <laughs> I oh, mean, well. seriously, I've wanted to come down there for a year. I know it. And I think the Lord has just done this to say you need to stay home. I understand. I don't like it, but we get what, those feelings. What Johnny Cash sing, I don't like it, but I guess things happen that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now I'm not going to say for sure, but right now I'm going to say don't count on me. Because you well, know as well as I do, things could change tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. we're going to miss you. Brother Allen's on his way from Texas now. I know it. I know it. That's <laughs> I, I would see him and hear him. I, I heard Brother Jack Dawsey going to be there just for Saturday. Yes, yeah, sir. That's what he told me. But you're not going to and I hadn't seen him in a long time. I wanted to see him. Right. <sighs> we're gonna, we're gonna sign off for and y'all too now. Don't don't get me I wrong. <laughs> I'm, it's not just, you know, meeting Alan halfway and Jack whatever. And I know. I, I, saw him, I enjoyed it so much last year. What time is it? Then it just... <sighs> Tears me up that the wheel. I mean, seriously. That's well, we we enjoyed having you in our home and uh, hopefully we'll get to meet again soon, not too long off. September, Thank Lord you. willing. Yes, sir. No, we come down here. <laughs> what? What'd she say? I'm I, just acting like a woman. I ain't coming up here if you don't come down here. <laughs> well, listen, listen. What side did y'all meet? First Sunday? Yes, we do. Okay, yeah. first Sunday. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to show up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not even going to tell you when, because I don't know when. That's right. But listen, if there's any way I can work it out, and, and I 
I really can't make make it like I think I'm not going to be able to. Um, right now, my plans <laughs> are to go see my mother at the end of July. Okay. So, uh, that that worked out I, good. I, that that would be good because we have our communion the first Sunday in August. Okay. And so uh, I may just uh, I may just plan to try to swing by first Sunday in August. So we'll we'll see what happens. Can I yeah. it? Probably want you to come this week too. The Lord will well, be done. You know that that's what I'm just getting ready to say. I you you I don't know that I will won't be there this weekend. But I don't right now. I can't say I, I am. What? Uh, but that wouldn't preclude me from coming back in August unless y'all just. Didn't want me. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, see. Uh, well, we love y'all, brother. We call you. Because my heart's with you. I promise you that. <laughs> my heart's with you down there this weekend. It really yeah. is. And Lord willing, I hope to be in prayer for that the Lord will be with you and have a wonderful glorious time i thought we had one last year we did there, so sure i hope y'all have it again with or without me just just caught out of this world for a little while is worth it all in it amen yeah. that's it mm. yes i'll tell you what <coughs> there's times when you really do feel that it's it's that foretaste to glory. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. When you're with your brethren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, you can feel the sorrow flow from eye to eye and joy from heart to heart, as the hymn writer mm -hmm. said. Yeah. Ain't many of us left. That's all they're supposed to be. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it's supposed to be, but it ain't many of us in believe like we do. I found that out real fast. We got a brother. <laughs> we got a brother from Texas that got a job as a deputy sheriff up in Oklahoma here this past summer. And uh, I asked him the day before yesterday. I said, "You find any hard shells up there?" He sent me word back. Said, "No, he found none yet." <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh. Uh, being in oh. Oklahoma, he probably hasn't. <laughs> being from there, I can tell you they they were they were few and far between when I was there, and I believe both of the churches are closed up now, are gone. Mm. The one brother U B served. All right. When I was out there. And the one in the far western part of the state that was with the the other side of Absoluters with Felda Morris and them, uh, I believe it's closed up now. Mm. It mm -hmm. was outside of Altus, Oklahoma. Um, I can listen to UV 24 hours, I think. You never get tired. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Uh, yeah. They're talking. You can't butt in. You gotta wait for low. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I did. He was something. Yeah. Did y'all ever know DB? We didn't. No. Uh -uh. I didn't think so. He was. Uh, he didn't do no traveling. Cause he was old when I knew him. I thought an awful lot of him too. Did you know the camps man? What was his name? Old camps. Um. Oh shoot, David and Randy's daddy. Oh, uh, camps. Elder Camps. I forget his first name now. He no, died. I don't think I remember him. Yeah. Oh, he was good too. He he didn't speak long, but when he got up there, he was he, he was like a tornado, <laughs> and it didn't take him long to say what he had to say. But it was it, wow, it was wonderful. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> That's cool. Yep, yep, yep. Brother, I'm going to bid y'all good night. All right. I think it's time for all of us to be okay. good night.
Hopefully be with you tomorrow, Brother Robert. Lord willing, we'll be night, here. And good night, brother. Good night, brother. Good night, brethren. Have I hope to see y'all tomorrow. Y'all be have a good one, and we'll see you later. All right, sir. Well, thank you.